I'm so glad to be with you today. Um, my name is Femi Oluopo, and we're, we're going to be looking, looking at a subject um, that is quite important, especially for those in that category. And that is, um, we call it wisdom for couples living apart. I believe um, the wisdom of God will speak to you today. So just um, sit tight and listen. Well. Alright, so for couples in long distance relationship, I mean married people now that are currently living apart, there are quite a number of challenges um, that they would face. They, I mean, they, they, it's, it's just every marriage will face some challenges, but there are those additional ones that are peculiar to those that are living um, apart. First of all, I would like to say it is not the the purpose of God for marriage that the two married people, the couple should be apart. They are not supposed to be. That's not the design of God. Um, Ephesians 5 um, 31 makes it clear for this purpose. Therefore shall a man um, leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and then two of them shall become one flesh. So they are not supposed to leave apart. Um, so it's not the plan uh, of God that married people should live apart. But then for some um, unavoidable reasons, that happens. And that's why it's important to talk about this. So there are a lot of challenges. Number one, communication will be more challenging. For every married, uh, um, every, every marriage, communication is important. But when you are now living apart, that gap can create a, a lot of um, stress in terms of communication. Um, if one is not careful, there are certain temptations that um, are likely to be faced. You're talking about uh, missing one another physically. You are, the, 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 the physical support that you would naturally enjoy from a partner, uh, you may not get that, of course, because the person is far away. Um, sometimes there could be of course, emotional uh, issues could be there. That, that's important. It's generally not easy. There are a whole lot of things that could be challenging in that regard. You know, it's always easier when you know that I can always call this person and the person shows up. So the, the, that physical support is not, uh, is not there. And, and that can be a challenge. I could go on and on. There are many challenges that could be there. But then how do we overcome them? Hmm. Um, I think it, it will be important to take them one by one. It's not, I cannot answer that in one go because there are several aspects to it. Is it communication we want to take uh, on now? Um, there are ways to it. So I would say, first of all, communication is the bedrock of any relationship and it now becomes more critical for those that are living apart. So I would say the first thing to do is to both agree that this separation is going to be for a limited amount of time. There must be a noble purpose for that separation and the two uh, people involved, the couple must be in agreement that that purpose is, uh, is a worthy one and then they both must agree to put in the extra work that it will take for them to survive that period. The hand must definitely be in view. If it's going to be for two years, one year, five years, it must be known from the beginning and then the two must agree that they will put in the extra work that is necessary. For every marriage, a lot of amount of effort, a lot of work is needed, but for those that would live apart for a period of time, uh, more work is needed. And the two of them must agree to put the necessary work into it. So there must be that agreement. And then when it now comes to communication, um, you must agree as to how you want to communicate. Um, what will be the frequency for example I from time to time stay away from my wife but then we have a pattern 
we know the frequency there must be regular communication regular i mean regular now for us we do daily daily communication for you it may not be daily but i would say that it must be agreed between the two and it must be that schedule must be fixed you must honor it religiously if the communication will be good it has to be agreed we will speak every day or we we'll speak every two two days for so so amount of time um, that has to be agreed by both and that has to be honored if for any reason that schedule is going to be affected it must be discussed before and um, so, so that's that's critical so it is regular communication not um, not constant communication and and I'm saying that because they are not exactly the same thing there are times that the other person is just calling unnecessarily and it's almost becoming a nuisance to the other person and that's why that must be agreed so if we say it is once or twice a day or twice a week that has to be agreed and that frequency should be honored now if you do anything outside that schedule um, that should be um, like some extras the add-ons but the agreed pattern must be honored of course there is room for spontaneity in the midst of the whole thing but the agreed pattern must be honored so communication the the, the 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 way to solve that is to ensure that and honestly uh, you have to agree whether it is audio communication you will do or video I'm saying you should use all of them preferably when possible you should do video it's um, I'll say use technology as much as possible technology would make things easier it's not it's not exactly the same like when you have the person with you but at least it puts your mind at rest you see the person it's uh, it bridge I mean it just bridges the gap a little bit you are not you, are, you don't feel too far away I do that with my wife I do that with my kids in fact I do homework by video sometimes so that's that's something that must be done so you use technology well you agree on the schedule and then you honor the schedule if there is anything that would disturb the the plan you have to communicate it ahead of time and i would say it's important to to do full disclosure let your partner understand your typical day if you are uh, going to be in class let your program be known by your partner if you are going to be at work uh, meetings let it be known so that if the person is calling and you are not responding the person knows that yeah it's because in fact the person will not even call at that time because your program is known so it is full disclosure um, so that would help communication So first of all, I mentioned something earlier and I'm going to repeat that. Full disclosure. Say everything. Say anything. Let it be let your life be an open book to your partner. Let your partner be able to tell what your day is. So full closure, I mean full disclosure. Full disclosure is important. It means I I, I know everything about this person. This person knows everything about me. Now Fidelity is something that is non-negotiable. So if you are a believer, you know that your faithfulness is first of all to God and then to your partner. So if we know that we will discuss everything and anything, I'm not going to hide anything, that's a value. It looks simple, but that's a value that, that you must uphold because if your partner is not going to be wondering what is wrong while you are not uh, reachable and all of that the partner must know that you are such a person that we can tell what this person will do and what this person will not do so uh, uh, fidelity is a value that first of all it's your responsibility to God and then to your partner so there shouldn't be any doubt as to whether you are faithful or not and then number two um, this is tied directly to 
uh, um, full disclosure like I mentioned earlier. So the things you spend your time on, so we know that the Word of God is superior to everything. It should be a value that you uphold in your relationship that we will stay committed to the Word. That's a value and that will guide in times of trouble. So you know that whatever happens, whatever the Word says, is the final thing that we would all uphold. That's a value and that would uh, that would that, that's important because I'll talk about some other things later when I when I start talking about you sharing um, activities together even though you are not physically together I would say sharing the word is an important thing you have read something that blessed you you want your partner to also read the same thing that way you you are developing the same way you are you are um, your thinking is in alignment with one another so those are key values if other values come to mind as we go on I'm going to mention them so I, I, I scratched that earlier number one uh, let's 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 dig deeper do a lot of video calls let the person be able to see one another you are back home. You are uh, you are you are in your apartment. You are doing some stuff. Now, let that happen when you are doing important stuff and things that are even trivial. There are times that there is nothing much to discuss. You are just there. I, I'll give you an example. There are moments that there are no important things to discuss. My wife is in the kitchen cooking and I'm on video I'm probably doing some other things and then she places the stuff there it gives a sense that you are with that person yes you just in and out you see this going on in and out sometimes the kids walk in and then they come in they say hello and all of that somehow it gives a sense that daddy or mommy um, is not too far away it's reachable so uh, you can you can you can share those kind of those kind of moments together so so that gives you an idea that the person is there um, and when you feel lonely and you're missing the person discuss it tell the person turn this to I mean tell your partner tell your husband tell your wife I'm missing you this way missing you that way talk about it uh, share memories and then talk about oh we see in a couple of whatever so it's more like you have a countdown now this varies from uh, couple to couple there are those that their period of separation is quite short you know that in four weeks I'm going to see my family again that's easier to say don't worry we're counting down to this but there are those who they can't tell when so that, that it becomes more difficult in that sense so for those I would say continue to discuss like that share your feelings talk about it in fact chat about it the more you talk the more you share together the better you feel it may not take it away but at least it keeps your mind um, towards a target you know you are going to you are, we're going to see very soon we're going to see at this time even if it is in one year there's a time into it it becomes hopeless when you don't know when this is going to end and that's why i said earlier that it should be for a noble purpose the separation should be for a noble purpose that is agreed by both because there are times that one person has chosen to go even though the the partner did not fully agree so it should be for a noble purpose that is agreed by both of you and then there should be a timing to it there must be the end in view we are going to come back together in six months we are going to come back together in in one year anything that is hopelessly long you don't know the end uh just like the bible says hope the fat makes the act six you just don't know when it will happen so it, it makes it more challenging so turn it to words do activities together do watch parties you can watch a movie together and share about it it gives a feeling that the person is here there are times that i'm i'm, I'm going on a walk 
and then I just do video call. There are times at work that I've just finished an inspection. I just want to see them and let them see me as well. Somehow it gives a feeling that they're in your world, you're in their world. So certain things you would have to uphold, you would have to do to manage that temporary separation. The separation has to be temporary because that's not the way God designed it. So talking about insecurity, uh, first of all, what is that thing that is leading to insecurity? Remember that I mentioned earlier that full disclosure is important. Each time you get to spend together, talk about your day, talk about the people in your space. And if anybody is acting funny, tell your partner. If you keep it a secret thinking that you can handle it, you will you will create that insecurity and the way you talk about it also matters if you talk about it in a way that your partner is afraid that maybe that person will persist or something uh, so you have to talk about it in a in a very clear manner and one of the things you can do to handle such is also the people in your space that you are always with you can make them meet your partner even if it's online like that let them know the people let them in fact even for people that are not living apart it's important we do that sometimes you want the people that you 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 relate with regularly to know your wife or to know your husband let them have a relationship also and if there is any of them that would constitute a problem it becomes easier to jointly deal with that so they know your wife they know your husband um, they are not strangers if anything that is out of the ordinary happens make sure you share it that way your wife or your husband knows the people that are usually around you if you are going for anything outside your regular schedule make sure you discuss it beforehand and if your partner is not comfortable with it you might need to find a compromise you know um, I remember telling someone years ago, the person wanted us to, to go out and have dinner. And I said, okay, I'll tell my wife uh, and see, I'll, I'll see what she says. And the person was like, you mean you tell her everything? Yes, I tell her everything. And then the person behaved as if, okay, all fine. Now we, I told my wife, she was like, okay, you can go. But while we were there, a restaurant somewhere out there I had a feeling that my wife was probably not comfortable with it anymore I, I just had that feeling and then the person was now asking me again that so you mean you tell your wife everything I said yes but I do I tell her everything so as we're here now whatever happens here today you tell your wife I said, of course didn't I tell you before I so make sure that that is that foundation is established let the other whoever is in your space know that our own the rule of the game for us is full disclosure nothing is going to be hidden because once you keep a shadow somewhere uh, it will come back to haunt you later so it, 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 and it helps your partner to feel safe also it will not allow insecurities to grow so that's one way to deal with insecurities and if you now know that there's a particular person that is just that your partner is just not comfortable with it uh, your allegiance is first to your partner um, than the other person so you will need to be wise as to uh, be able to create a distance you don't want to be in that situation where uh, your partner is always feeling like oh you're with this person again so that's something to deal with and even for those that are not living apart we always have those people who could make our partners feel insecure you need to deal with that um, your allegiance is to your partner first of all before anybody else make sure that you continue to respect the the schedule of communication that you have the tendency is because we had a fight you will now not call or you block your partner that is silly don't ever do it even if it means you will call and uh, it probably would feel awkward at first 
no matter what happens keep the agreed schedule that way it's easier to resolve matters if you leave the gap for too long i have seen uh, these again and again that a little thing can become a monster if you allow that gap uh, don't allow gap in communication even when you are not in good terms keep the schedule talk about things and seek to listen to your partner more than you want to impose um, your thoughts and ideas it's just like you will do when you are physically together make sure you don't allow that gap and whatever principle you apply in resolving conflict when you are physically together would be applicable as long as you keep that um, that schedule it's easier to create that gap because the person is not physically with you now you are hungry and you are just like i'm going to cut off for a number of days the more you do that the more awkward it becomes to get back to the normal rhythm so make sure you keep the rhythm uh, of communication make sure you you continue to respect the values so for example you know that typically you will not go out with anybody with friends and co without telling your partner don't now say that because we had a fight and i just want to be on my own and all of that you you disturb the communication flow and then you start doing things that you have both agreed that these are not acceptable so don't do it stay committed to the things that you have both agreed the on i mean the, the 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 rules that you have set it continues to be binding it gets you back on track uh, in the shortest uh, amount of time okay um so i've talked about you having shared activities you're reading a book uh let your partner also read that book in fact i heard of um, a couple that will share a book together and the way they share it together is one person will be reading it out to the other person so that way if we are reading 20 pages tonight maybe the man is reading or the the, the wife is reading you are reading it out loud and you are just there together it, it just gives a sense that you are together you are still emotionally connected now this is where each person's love language comes in so people have different love languages uh, so now you are far apart if your whole love language is physical touch and all of that it cannot touch you physically by Bluetooth or by it's not doable but then there are ways to manage that if uh, okay we've had situations where uh, 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 this is very funny one day I called and then my wife was wearing uh, an outfit that belongs to me she just wanted to feel close and and, and that's something that is so you, you have a sense that I, I, I'm just with this person now adopt things like that because physical touch if imagine you are in Nigeria the person is in the UK or in the US physical touch is not possible and don't uh, don't employ someone else to do that it's not it's not it's out of place if your whole love language is somebody sharing gifts and all of that that's easy even remotely you can order gifts you can be creative about it you there are you can use proxies people that are that are close to you that can do that on your behalf you can so you you need to get creative you do what you can do with technology you do what you can do uh, e-commerce has made things easier you can pay for something in china and it's delivered to so if that's the person's love language so that way you still feel very close and you know there are times that you you want to you want to go out on a date you can still go out on a date with the other person remotely you go but then you are the video is there with yeah so the person there are moments that i want to have dinner and then i turn on the video i do that with my wife i do that with the children first of all i'm showing them everything that has been brought to me to show them that this is about to go down there are times that they are eating and i'm eating and then we are we're sharing the moment together you will need to do a lot of that 
uh, and that's why we're saying this period of separation has to be limited you can't do that for 10 years at some point you will be tired of it so those are those are things you could do um, words of affirmation for those who see you have that as your love language you can do that on phone you can you can do that tell the, i mean you can say anything you want to say remotely so that still works uh, the ones that are that are difficult are the ones that are physical you have to be with the person physically but you can manage it yes one that i didn't mention earlier activities that you can share together praying together is important to it's quite important that you have that period that you pray together no matter how short in fact if you can make it a rule that you will spend a few minutes daily to pray together that will go a long way to help there are times that uh, we we are doing some fasting and praying program together and we have a, a period of time that we would we do on zoom to pray together or you do on whatsapp to pray together that is one shared activity that is spiritual and then is also helping you to bond so that that's that's important um another thing like I, I talked about watching a movie together all of that is possible now and then you know there are things you, you that, that are a blessing to you in the course of the day share it send it to the other person the other person would also share with you there are moments that my wife would dress in a certain way and she's feeling herself and then she takes the picture and sends it to me and she's like see your babe and there are moments that I am at work doing a whole, probably dressed in PPEs, and I take the shot and send as well. There are times that, you know, technology is so advanced now, they remind you of things you have enjoyed in the past, memories of the past, and uh, a video is being shared by one of the social media platforms telling you, can you remember this a year ago? I take some of such moments. I send it, I share it also. There are times that you stumble on videos, short clips that are probably a blessing to you. You share it with your partner. In fact, there are times that I'm, I'm on my wife, like I have sent you this number of videos on, on, uh, on IG and you have not checked it out. Those things help you. So it just makes you feel like you are, you are, you are still there with one another. You are sharing moments together. And, and, and that would go a long way to help. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. That is so critical. It is critical for everyone that is married, whether you are living apart or you are living together. But much more for those living apart. Number one, uh, we will not employ assistant husband or assistant wife or assistant boyfriend because when the other person is not there there is the tendency to gravitate uh, in the direction of someone now you don't you may not have the intention to do anything bad but someone is just there that you talk to again and again avoid things like that let it be clear that if you need to discuss anything it may still go back to your partner because some people may not be able to handle it uh, the more somebody gives attention the more they they get attracted to the person and you don't want to create a dangerous environment um, for yourself so if and you should know yourself that much and these are things that you should agree on now if you truly have the habit of sharing your day you will know when there are danger signals when um, someone seems to be appearing in an awkward manner again and again and you can quickly um, address that before it becomes um, something that goes out of hand so there are things we will not do you both should agree on it we don't go clubbing 
if that's what you uphold as values set that boundary on no account will you go out with anybody that i don't know or approve of let that be discussed and agreed upon and let no one cross that line if you receive any gift from anybody uh, it must be discussed and if it is agreed that this is a strange one if it should be returned it has to be written. that is you respecting the boundaries that you have set to make your marriage work those things now boundaries you will set some at the beginning as time goes on there will be additional boundaries to set so there are there are many things that could form boundaries but this has to be agreed and discussed it varies from person to person um, my wife is never worried about who I talk to or who I don't talk to because we we've been together for quite a number of years she knows what I would not do and what I will do but then if she's uncomfortable at any point in time or if I am flouting any boundary she's going to speak up I will also speak up in fact it's um, when I call sometimes and how do you call this time around if there is someone else in that space without hearing the person's voice I would know and that's because there is a way we relate there's a way we discuss which should be for every couple and you will know when your wife is probably cautious or talking in a certain way because somebody's there and those things if you are careless and you don't know those things uh, you're being too careless so it, it, it's it's that important the boundaries will be will be things that you will both set and agree on I'm talking about expectations now expectations will vary from couple to couple from the beginning before the separation is done the expectations should be discussed and agreed upon for example it would be awkward if one person expects that your communication will take this pattern and the other person does not have the same understanding we're talking of regular communication some people don't want to do daily communication so if the other person is expecting daily communication or is trying to impose daily communication the, the, the partner will feel choked there are people who may not be able to cope with that so the expectations should be discussed for example there are those that will tell you that and you should know your partner that much when there are special occasions I expect that a gift should be sent whether we are together or not Valentine's Day I expect something to happen on my birthday of course you should if you are not a dummy you should know that on the birthday you should do something but then all of those things should be clearly discussed the expectations should be discussed and if there are additional expectations along the way you should bring it to the table and discuss it so the expectations of the two people involved um, is left to them to make clear to themselves what do you expect what would you call um, a fulfilling um, week what are the things that we should have done that we must have done within a week that makes it fulfilling for you those kind of things should be clearly discussed and agreed upon you find middle grounds there are times that your own expectation is this way the other person is and then you can find a common ground and then you stick to that so I, I, I think we'll leave it at that expectations should be discussed it should be as plain as possible don't don't be don't don't assume that he should know or she should know voice your expectations and then go the extra mile to ensure that you don't disappoint your partner regarding those expectations i see what you mean clearly and it's a tricky one especially in africa 
So there are, and that's why those things should be clearly discussed. So, for example, uh, the husband is abroad for now, and the wife is here, and the parents-in-law are also there. There are cases where they expect that the lady should visit from time. In fact, there are those who would say the lady should go and live with them. Uh, that should be discussed. It's not cast in stone, and in fact, it's not clearly written in the Bible that uh, it should be like this or like that. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Both of you should agree on what is acceptable and such that it will not cause trouble. You don't want your wife to go and be living with your parents. That can be messy. If uh, occasionally you want the partner to visit, that should be clearly discussed and it should be something that your partner is comfortable with. If it is such that it puts uh, the other person under unnecessary pressure, then you should find a better way to approach that. So let those expectations be discussed. Don't assume that this person should know. And please protect your partner when it comes to those things. If your parents or parents-in-law are having uh, um, unrealistic expectations or expectations that would put your partner or your relationship under unnecessary pressure, you both should agree on the best way to handle it. And whatever you agree is what you both should abide by. To, to do that, it's, it's, um, it's not very easy. So you are going to have to get creative. You will use words. You will use... Uh, if I say words, it means... You will, you will have discussions, video calls, uh, audio, whatever, messages to express it. Now, it becomes difficult if those things are not what the other person sees as, uh, if it's not a love language for that person, it becomes difficult. But then you are going to have to get extremely creative about that. Um, it's it's um, that's why this cannot be something that would last for too long. So so to answer that question, let me start this way. Number one, you are living apart for now. Uh, is it possible that after you've done all the regular things that you're supposed to do, constant communication, and you also expressing how you feel about one another, how you miss one another, that's important. But then is it possible that you plan and schedule some visits? This is critical. We're going to be apart for two years, one year. How many times can we visit one another within that period? If the man cannot come, can the woman come? Because these are things that must be see if I know that within the one year that we're going to be apart we could spend one week together whether by me coming or by you coming that would make a lot of sense that would that would ease the tension you get to see each other you get to the things you are belonging to say or do you you have the opportunity to do so and then there are situations where it is not possible, for example, the guy lives in America and somehow the lady is not able to visit yet. Is it possible to find a neutral ground elsewhere such that the two of you can travel and meet at a particular spot? So I'm saying this will be financially demanding. That's why you should plan for it, budget for it, so that you can, you can make that work. Even if it is within the same country, so imagine someone is in Abuja and the other one is in is in Lagos. You can it will cost money. Take a trip. I mean, just one weekend. That will set things. It it, it brings some 
you can you, you can spice up the whole thing and, and help you to endure till when you will finally be together but honestly if you are in the same country uh, wisdom says that you should one person should relocate and meet the other and you'll be together but I'm saying when it is several miles apart find a way to visit the wife can visit the husband can visit where that is not possible find a neutral ground where you can meet plan it it will cost you money you remember I said at the beginning that you should both agree that you are ready to put in the work the sacrifice that it will require to make your relationship work so this will cost you money it will cost you time but it's something to plan for so um, that, that's, that's one of the things you can do as well The, the other, as I said it before, you will have to use words, use gifts. Uh, those are things you can do. There are there are there are things that people explore that I don't personally agree with. But the truth is, whatever the husband and the wife agree to do, that does not involve an external party and that does not go against the Bible is acceptable. So do it uh, at least for that short period of time that you will be apart, it keeps you going. Well, I think pretty much we've, we've, talk, we've touched on it. Include your partner in your day in such a way that it does not affect your schedule. There has been moments that my wife is calling when I'm in meetings. So what I do sometimes is, especially when the meeting is is online, a remote meeting, I'll pick the call so that she hears that the meeting is going on and she's saying sorry. There are times that you cut the call and you're cutting it, you're cutting it. The other person is feeling like, what is this? There are times that the meeting comes up, it was not planned. So what I do sometimes again is to when something that is unplanned comes up, I call beforehand and I say, when I remember, there are some other times that you, are, you, you, you probably forgot and then she's trying to reach and she's not able to. So those are the moments I would pick the call and let her hear that I'm in a meeting. I'm saying, see, I'm in a meeting right now. So she knows that you're in a meeting. But there are times that I know that the meeting is going to happen. So I'll call and say, for the next so 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 hours, don't call me because I will be in this meeting or I will be a way to go and do this or do that. And ensure to include the person in your day um, as much as possible. There are times that it's just 30 seconds call. I just call to say hello. I just call to say good morning. Or sometimes you just send messages. There are times that um, if, if you have kids, they are already on their way to school. You just call in that early morning just to say good morning to everybody, wish the, them a nice day and all of that. Those are, and that forms part of what they look forward to. When you don't do it for a period of time, they begin to miss it. So that tells you that you are doing something that has formed part of their day. So include them in your day. I mean, include your partner in your day. If you have children, include them in your day um, and let it be vice versa. And you, you carry on like that till that period of separation would would end you know it's um just be just be use every means possible to bridge that gap be part of uh, each other's day and don't do it in such a way that you become a nuisance to the other person you know so the values that you uh both share you continue to oppose that if there are developmental moves you are making make sure that that is being shared and your partner is being motivated to do the same so imagine someone they are, they are, they are, they are far apart um, you are developing yourself in this context the other person is not at some point your communication will become strained because you will be able to discuss at a level and the other person is not getting it. In fact, let me add this. For those who are living apart, 
um, two different worlds. Aha, and I forgot to mention this at the beginning. Part of the challenges you would have is also the time zone difference. And that is major because if you are living within a zone that it, the time is the same, that's, that's fine. You could pick up the call and call, uh, pick up the phone and call at um, almost um, any, any time that works that you both understand. But if the other person is in a different time zone, it becomes more difficult. You are calling when the, this other person is just waking up. You are very much alive. The other person is still sleepy and all of that. So all of those are things to, to factor in and must be agreed. Must be agreed. And that's why if it is only one hour that is workable within the day, you respect the schedule. Um, one other major thing that I have seen that as a missing link for a lot of people living apart is not understanding the context of the other person within a short time someone is, is, is living in the uk or living in the us and you are still here in nigeria you, your context will be so different that things happening in your world will be so different that if this person does not take time to understand what is happening in the other person's world it will affect the way you communicate. At some point, you'll be feeling like, why is this person not making sense? It, 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 because the person, your realities are now becoming different. So spend extra time to understand what is going on in the UK. In fact, those can be um, um, things that would sparkle discussions between the two of you. You understand what is going on there. Um, the person, which is, the, the partner also spends time to understand what is going on in Nigeria. Because it is necessary to, to, to understand the context of the other person and then that way you have a, a, a common ground where you're discussing, you have common understanding of certain things or else you're speaking and the other person is wondering what you're saying, you're not making sense. Uh, so it, it, will, it will be important to spend time. And when it comes to those that are, for example, some the partner is, is living in the US and uh, the immigration process is only clearly understood by one person. You will be frustrated along the line. So, don't just be there in the dark. Spend time to understand every detail about the immigration process uh, at the other end, so that when they are saying that we we we, we, we still need to wait, you are not one. You are not wondering, thinking, why is it taking so long? Because you understand the process from A to Z. So I'm saying invest time and energy in studying the context at the other hand. And that, that happens both ways so that it helps your communication. When certain things are becoming um, delayed, when the, the, the wait is becoming too long, you understand why and you are not totally in the dark. So this is important. It helps to to boost how you relate. You know, your communication becomes better. It helps to you are you are you are you are, you are both learning, if not exactly at the same rate. At least you are you are both shifting in the same direction. You can learn and grow apart if you are not deliberate about focusing on similar things and encouraging each other to to develop in certain ways uh, well there are like you mentioned all of those uh, platforms that would allow you to to do video calls audio calls conference calls because there has been um, there are times that okay if you, if you have children also you want to include them and they are not physically together uh, you, you can do conference call and also all of those all of those uh, um, um, various um, platforms would, would help um, which other one comes to mind yeah, technology has uh, it has made a lot of things easier you, you can you can do teams call if you like Microsoft teams you can there are a whole lot of uh, things that could help you uh, you do chats you do all sorts uh, and um, which other thing there, there, all of those platforms are there. 
to uh, you know there are platforms that would that would help you to do uh, shared activities you can do watch parties and all of that all of that is possible but uh, it would take a lot of effort it would take all of you I mean both of both parties believing that that is something that they should invest their time and energy into um, for that to work hmm so that's a critical one. That's critical because when you start to leave a part, especially when it's when it becomes longer than necessary, uh, each person would have adopted formulas that work without the other one. So your life has been this way, and you have learned to do things a certain way. Even though the other person is just there remotely, when the person now finally comes, it looks like you are now in each other's face constantly. Uh, you've been longing to have this person back with you. Now the person is back. It can become a challenge because now it's very easy to begin to see what you think should have been done a certain way, and it's been done. Uh, in a manner that you don't approve of because you've not been around and now you are back you are beginning to point out all of those things so I'll say first of all when you are back together relax you are going to uh, start the process of getting to know each other again you know yourselves but assume that you don't know assume that some other new things have come in while you you've been apart now you you want to allow the transition to happen as seamlessly as possible um, don't be too strong in opposing anything that you don't agree with because that can lead to uh, some explosive atmosphere you don't want that to happen so leave that gap to say that we are going to relearn one another. You will unlearn certain things that may have um, that may have crept in over time that will not be good for the relationship going forward. And you will relearn uh, yourselves. You 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 get to understand. And imagine if you are you you used to be in Nigeria you relocated abroad temporarily and you are back with your wife or your husband in Nigeria you will need to adapt back to that system or if your wife or your husband now comes to meet you abroad apart from um, unlearning and relearning yourselves you now want to also understand the new environment so it's, it's important to take it slow don't be, don't be too strong in opposing the things you don't agree with. Allow, um, go a larger heart to, to accommodate the other person while you clearly communicate why you think certain things should be better. I'll give you a, 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 a practical example. Um, and I say this the funny way. Um, I started my career uh, being like 16 years ago now and I would say I started shortly after we got married maybe maybe like four or five months after I started to do a rotational job so I'll be away two weeks be back two weeks so I would say that I know what it, it means to be a rotational husband uh, to be a rotational dad and I did not know the difference until I became an everyday dad. So at some point, I stopped working as a rotational person, and then we were seeing each other every day. And then that was when I realized that there were certain things that the kids had learned that I would not have accepted if I were to be fully present. But I didn't see all of that before. I didn't think that there was any gap now I'm seeing it and at some point I was almost becoming too strong uh, 
in opposing those things, that would not help. So, first of all, I appreciate the fact that your partner has done the very best possible. Now you are you are there. Don't be there pointing out everything that you think is wrong. Let's now work together to achieve what we think will be better going forward. So I'll say create that atmosphere um, where discussions can go on in a mature way without fireworks and um, it's, a, it's a transition period. Both of you should agree that things should change where you both agree that changes are necessary and uh, just just allow things to happen the easy way don't 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 go headlong um, and, and God will help you things will things will get better you ease back into um, the new normal you know whatever was happening before was some kind of normal but now you are getting into the new normal so it's so much about communication but creating the atmosphere for it um, don't make the atmosphere hostile uh, let's take baby steps if you like just make sure that you're making progress don't don't do it in such a way that the other person feels attacked and that those are the things that and you know uh, I was uh, watching a video where somebody was talking about um, the statistics of those who now come together after a period of separation that according to statistics four months down the line in many cases they break up but then that doesn't have to be your case prepare for it uh, know that there will be some things that you would have to both work together to improve on and your life will be better going forward you know okay so there are signs to tell you that there's probably fire on the mountain but don't run just uh uh, know what to do and you might be able to save your relationship number one sign you would see is when the schedule of communication is no longer being respected by uh, one or the two persons involved that's that's a sign that something is wrong and another thing is when continuously the agreed boundaries are no longer being respected that is a sign that something is going wrong and then the idea of full disclosure when you start noticing that full, full, full disclosure is no longer happening certain things are not being discussed you can see that probably there are uh, your discussions are no longer as it used to be now there could be other reasons for that but if the other person is not forthcoming to discuss it that could be a sign and I think uh, one of the things that would help is if both of you um, have accountability partners people that have uh, oversight over you that you can discuss with if you notice anything that is out of place especially when you have tried to address them and um, they seem not to be um, easy to deal with. Uh, so these, these people I'm talking about, these people that have oversight over you, are people that should uh, that your partner would will honor enough to listen to, and that way they can quickly come in to understand what is happening and get you back on track. But don't ignore any signs that you see. If the communication schedule is not being not being respected anymore if boundaries are being flouted and uh, those could be signs that uh, uh, something is going wrong and then if strangers begin to come up uh, in between you you could see and it's not it's not being discussed as usual then it's probably um, it's probably something that you need to address uh, and I think you should be swift in addressing it Uh, well, um, that's part of communication. Say it. 
if you are grateful, if you are thankful for something, say it. If you want to appreciate with a gift, there are many ways you can do that. Um, in fact, you should be, especially when, uh, whether you have kids or not, that the other person is doing well and still being faithful to the relationship is uh, something to be grateful for. So it, it, it should happen both ways. Uh, be deliberate about showing that appreciation that I appreciate that you are holding um, it all together while we are still apart this way commend the person commend, say, say, say it send it as a message um, give gifts if possible uh, to show that you are really appreciative of that person and all of that will go a long way to send some deeply rooted um, love signal to the other person and that, that, will, that will go a long way and in fact where you have proxies who um, can be helpful to also provide some sort of support and help you to uh, express such a, 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 a appreciation use that as well you know uh, every help you can get will be necessary but don't, don't, um, you know, there are times that you almost feel like, well, 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 we are doing what we have to do. Uh, do I need to appreciate the other person? He or she should appreciate me as well. Uh, you take the lead, do it well, and then you see it come back to you also. So every means available, just use them. Our faith community plays a major role and that's why whenever we are apart like that make sure you are not um, isolated be connected to the faith community now if if uh, in the region you are if there are people that belong to the same church family with you connect with them number one that reinforces the value of the tribe that you belong to you know there are times that you 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 do right not just because you know this is what is right to do but also because there are people around you reminding you of what is right so you need to um, stay connected to to the faith community that you belong to um, and, and that is applicable to both uh, people and even when you now have challenges, the faith community there comes around um, to strengthen you. It also helps you to manage the idea of loneliness because you are now in a family. You're in a family, they know that your, your better half is not around and without ulterior motive, they are there for you genuinely. There are moments in your life that you want the other person to be physically present but the person is not because of this separation the faith community will be there to support and that way you will still miss the other person but then you now know that um, you still have a family so staying connected to the faith community is important it strengthens your values it, it, it gives you a sense of belonging and uh, they, 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 you, you are not lonely, you know, it, it's, it's important. So that, that's, that plays a major role, it helps you through that period. Let, let's do a quick recap. So for those that are currently living apart, don't forget, it has to be because there is a noble purpose for the separation. The the, the, and, and that has to be agreed by both parties the separation has to be for a temporary period it has to be as short as possible there must be the end in view and then establish the ground rules of how you would operate um, both of you have to be willing to put in the necessary work to make the relationship work so work together to ensure that that is uh, that is done set boundaries things you must not do things you must do and be committed to those boundaries seek help from your faith community when necessary and uh, 
that season will soon be over. Um, it's, it's, I believe the separation is for good. And at the end of the day, you will be back together um, and your family will continue to grow stronger. So um, stay at it. God is with you. You are never alone. See you at the top.